everybody and welcome back. We are on day two of our Ensenada cruise, which means it is our day at sea. So let's get exploring. So as you saw in our last video, we were up pretty late last night. So this morning also started out a little late. After a slow start, I met up with my friends and had breakfast in the main dining room. I ordered some French toast, but I wasn't really feeling it. So I started off the day with a couple of big glasses of water and a mimosa. So now we're just hanging out here on the ocean off the California, Mexico coast. It's about 11 a.m. and the pools are pretty busy, but it's a little too windy for me to be in them. So while my friends lounge in the sun, let's go take a walk around the upper decks. I guess the pool is on deck 11, and it's pretty cool up here. Um, there's quite a bit to do. Besides the pool, you've got a miniature golf course. There's a rock climbing wall, the wave rider, and the water slides. Plus, if you're hungry, there's a Johnny Rockets Express, if you want to grab a burger or a hot dog and an El Loco Fresh, where you can grab a couple of tacos, quesadillas, burritos, right there on the deck by the pool. There's also a couple of bars if you're ready for a drink. Now, we actually have a reservation for lunch at Hooked, the seafood restaurant, at about 2 o'clock. So, for now, I'm just going to have me a pina colada to tide me over until then. So as you can see, there's a lot of empty chairs up here on this deck if you want to come lounge around in the sun. And it's a nice getaway from all the craziness at the pool. And this here is the upper level of the lime and coconut bar. And we're just gonna drop off our empty really quick and continue on.
I'll count you in. I want you to sing it, okay? When I say go, you start singing. Here we go. Here we go. Now. You're as cold as ice. Willing to sacrifice our love. Keep going. <laughs> you never take advice. But someday you'll pay the price. And oh, I've seen it before. It happens all the time. You close the door and leave the world behind. Now, lunch at Hooked was pretty good. And I apologize in advance because obviously I was hungry and neglected to get any video of our food. So here's a couple of pictures of a few of the items we got. Now, not being a seafood person, I opted for the kids' steak, which turned out to be pretty good. And of course, I got the lemon tart for dessert, which obviously was very good because I dug into it before I had a chance to take a picture. But overall, a very good and satisfying lunch. Whew, I'm pretty stuffed after that lunch. So not being much of a sunbather, I decided to head back down to the promenade and just kind of tool around for a little while. And it was pretty busy down there. Here is my room. And after a good satisfying lunch like I had, what better way to cap that off than with a couple of drinks at the Tiki Bar? And you can see what I mentioned earlier. It's the middle of the day and there is no one in this place. But that was fine with me because it meant I could come in here and relax and have a couple of drinks without having to deal with a big crowd. All right, guys, we've had our couple of drinks and we are back on deck. Let's go explore the rest of the uh, activities there are on the top deck. And this here is your water slide. They've also got a little basketball slash volleyball court down here. A few ping pong tables. Lots of stuff to keep you active.
All right, guys. So when I told you in my other video that time on a cruise goes by very, very fast, let me tell you, it really does. Before I knew it, it was time for dinner, and we had reservations at Jamie's Italian Restaurant. Now, once again, I apologize. I was hungry again, and I dug in without getting any video, so you're going to have to settle for some more pictures. And this was our view during dinner, which was pretty awesome. But without further ado, let's take a look at some of the food we got. And again, like all our other meals, everything was super delicious. So after dinner, we head back down to Playmakers down on the promenade and grabbed ourselves a seat and had a couple of drinks. And then it was time for the 70s dance party. So sit back and get ready to boogie.
Okay, now that was a blast. Overall, a very fun time and a good way to end the evening. Now, they also had an 80s party the following night, but unfortunately, I was severely tired and missed out on that one. But I'm sure it would have been a blast too. The point is, they know how to keep you entertained aboard ship. Buenos dias, all. It's day three, and we have arrived at Ensenada. We docked this morning, and as you can see, it's a gorgeous day. Now, the plan is to have a little breakfast, and then head into town to check out Papas and Beer, one of the more well-known tourist cantinas. Right now, I'm in my friend's room, standing on their balcony, because they got a balcony cabin, and right below us are a bunch of sea lions just making a ruckus. But they're pretty cool. So we headed down to the main dining room and grabbed a little breakfast. And this is what the dining room looks like when it's empty. And this is what it looks like from the third floor. After breakfast, we went back to get ready for the day. Once off the ship, we grabbed one of the little tourist buses that takes you into town. And I think it was like six bucks a person, Everybody. round trip. Good morning and welcome to Ensenada, Baja California, the best city in the world. My hometown, so please don't say different. <laughs> My name is Roberto and I'm here to give you some information. I hear music. And once you're in Ensenada, be prepared to be bombarded every few feet by one kind of a vendor or another. And I mean constantly. Every store and shop you walk by will have someone outside inviting you to come in and check out their merchandise. And when they're not, there's kids and other street people all trying to sell you something. So be aware and be prepared. So we walked through town through about six blocks of shops, restaurants, and bars. And we ended up at Papas and Beer. Now, I was expecting a party bar, but this place was off the hook. It had this sort of wild, lawless, spring break type of party vibe to it. The very bass heavy music was blaring and booming. And the male servers were in there holding girls upside down while they poured alcohol into their mouths and then shook them up before setting them back down. Now I guess I might be showing my age, but it was a little too wild for me. Not exactly the watered down tourist friendly destination I imagined. But despite the loud, crazy atmosphere, we enjoyed some margaritas and nachos. And then these guys showed up and put on a pretty impressive show.
we made it back on board the ship after a couple of interesting hours in town. We've still got a while to kill before our dinner reservations at the steakhouse. So let's go take a walk around the ship and see what they've got going on there. So while we're strolling, let's talk again about the dining package and whether or not it was worth it. For me, I definitely enjoyed eating at all of the different restaurants and getting to try different things instead of having to stick to the dining room menu or whatever they had in the buffet, which I never even utilized. And actually, I only walked through the buffet once and honestly, I have to say I wasn't that impressed with what I saw. So again, I was very happy that I got to try all the different foods the restaurants had to offer without having to pay individually for each meal. And it was very nice being in an atmospheric location each time in a much less crowded environment. It just felt more intimate. Plus, I had the benefit of appetizers that we ate at Playmakers more than a few times, as well as my hamburger and hot dog that I got from Johnny Rockets. So overall, for $150 for the package, I'd say I ate more than my money's worth. Now, the problem with all that food on the ship is that if you're someone who doesn't have restraint, like me, you may end up overdoing it, get too full, and then not want to do anything else. So a prime example, as I mentioned, I had a small breakfast and then some nachos at Papa Some Beer. Now, I knew we had reservations at the steakhouse later on, but in the early afternoon, I got a bit hungry and I realized I hadn't tried Johnny Rockets yet. So, since I had a $20 credit that was included in the dining package, I decided to grab a burger and a hot dog and split them with my friend. Not really a problem. But then I remembered how good the wings were at Playmakers and realizing that this was my last chance to enjoy an order, we headed down there and grabbed two baskets worth and, of course, a couple of beers. <laughs> Less than two hours later, I was sitting at the steakhouse not wanting to even look at food, but still managing to wolf down a salad, a steak, a baked potato, ice cream, and you guessed it, a beer. So they basically had to roll me out of there, and I was so stuffed that all I could do was go lie down, which of course made me miss the 80s party on the promenade. So a word of advice, moderation is key. Now the drink package I probably wouldn't get again. Having it didn't really save me any money, and I feel like it encouraged me to drink more. Because since it was all you could drink, I felt like I had to get my money's worth. I'm still not 100% positive if I did or not, but if I had to pay by the drink, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have overdone it as much, or at the very least, I would have drank less alcohol and more soda or water. If anything, I might get the soda and juice package and then pay for my alcohol separately. That way, at least my bottled waters would be included because I did drink a lot of water and I wouldn't want to have to pay for each one individually. All right, it's about time for dinner. So let's mosey up to deck 11 where right across from Jamie's Italian and the entrance to the buffet, we have Chops, which is the steakhouse. Now this place had a nice cozy atmosphere and we got a window seat again with a great view of the ocean and the sunset. I opted for the filet mignon which I ordered a little too well done, but it was still a very good steak. 
And it's interesting how they bring you the sides, almost like you're supposed to share it with the rest of the table. And you can see my friend had the lobster, which was an extra charge, but she said it was very good. Now, like I said, unfortunately, I stuffed myself so much that that's pretty much where the cruise ended for me. I headed back to bed early, watched a little TV while I digested, and then hit the sack. Next thing I knew, we had docked back in L.A., and we were disembarking. In the morning, we grabbed a couple of muffins and pastries from the coffee shop, and a couple hours later, we were off the ship, and by 10 a.m., we were heading back home. Okay, so my final thoughts on the whole three-day Ensenada cruise. Would I do it again? Yeah, I think I would. It was a fun time. It was relaxing. And it's an experience everyone should try at least once. And it is nice to have that unlimited food whenever you want it. Now, one piece of advice I'll give you is before you go, stop by the Dollar Tree and get one of these little magnetic signs or something else to decorate your cabin door with because you're going to get lost and it makes it a lot easier to find your cabin or your companion's cabin when you're not really sure which side of the ship you're on or which way you're going because you do get turned around. Anyway, thanks for checking out this cruise. Go out and book your own now. Have a great time.